Hi folks, just a quick thing before we kick off. Um, this episode was meant to be the bird with the crystal plumage, uh, but long story short, I've had a bit of a technical nightmare with it, so we are just going to crack on with the chain and uh, move on to our next film. Uh, that's about it, hope you enjoy the episode. Listeners, and welcome back to the Captain's Horror Meltdown. My name is Cammy. I am the captain of this ship, and I'm joined, as always, Oof, here we go. By, <laughs> by my by my good friend and comrade in arms, John, oh. who is the wiper on this ship. The wiper. The wiper. Now I've actually looked into this this week. Oh, okay. The, the wipe. <laughs> so. You're starting out in a new career in the ship. Yes. Even though there's only two of us on here. You are uh, a wiper, which is the most junior role in the engine room. Right. What? Well, do you just literally wipe stuff? Well, your job consists of cleaning <laughs> cleaning the engine room and the machinery. And basically, you're on an apprenticeship right. to... You put in your sea time. Okay. And when your apprenticeship is finished, you become an oiler. Right, so basically what's happening so far in this podcast is I'm on a series of demotions and you now wish me to wipe down your machinery. Yes. Great. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, be- well, it's better than being a jizz mopper. Um, I don't know, at least you maybe see some stuff in the jizz mopper. <laughs> Not just your machinery, just like different machinery. It'll be nice and warm down there because I'll tell you it's fucking freezing on the deck of this ship. <laughs> Just now it is Baltic. Ah, it's better than it was last week. <laughs> Let's look on the bright side. Well, and and not as bad as it is for uh, our listeners in America. Yes, oh, off you who f- are suffering the fucking Arctic chill, the bla- Arctic blast or whatever it's called. Yeah, what is it called? Is it called an Arctic blast? Arctic oh, cataclysm? M- minus fifty degrees or something like that. Fuck the oh god! Can- Chilly. Bears. Surely you couldn't even go outside, could you? Nah, it's fucking horrendous. Horrendous. Hooray! Hey! <laughs> but we're going to keep warm on the ship with our uh, by by sitting by the fire mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. chatting about this week's movie, which is Opera ah. from 1987. Dario Argento. Oh, sorry, I'm going to turn my. Sorry, I've got some notifications. I'm going to turn off. Oh, he's got notifications. Yeah. Are they exciting notifications? Kinda. In in a in I've sort of taken after your your lead. And I yep. am, I'm, I'm actually, all the things that I thought I was going to sell, like whatever they might be on eBay, I've actually started doing it. And uh, people are, are buying stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you, I saw that you had your uh, Kevin Smith collection up yep. for sale. Yep, that's uh, received did its it opening bid and it's, got, it's gone no further than that, but I'll be happy with that. Um, Excellent. The weirdest thing is I've had a camera lens that's been sitting in a cupboard for about two years. Yeah. And it has now gone... 70 quid beyond the buy it now price which i didn't even Abs- know was a thing that could happen absolutely outrageous you'd think that if you were the person putting in the bed of say even a penny more than the buy it now price ebay would say do you want to buy it now but i suppose they want to make as much on commission as they can really don't they? i suppose so probably... it just seems weird i know totally absolutely bonkers but but there you, you go. think when you saw it creeping close you'd just buy it now wouldn't you oh yeah absolutely or like just say you know I'd actually pay 250 quid for that if I can get it for 220 I'll just buy it yeah and it's in absolute mint condition it's never even been outside Shit. and it's, it's now Man. going for it's now like 285 quid it's like what's wrong with the world anyway um, but yeah that's our kind of on running thing is selling things off at the minute and I've got a whole yep. taking pictures of all the Blu-rays I'm getting rid of they're in a cupboard I'm going to list things slowly because I know I wouldn't be yeah. able to cope with an avalanche of stuff. So I'm going to list three things a week. I reckon I might be able to cope with it. Uh, yeah, I listed uh, two, two. I listed eight films recently. Uh, in a one I put In a one yeah. Oh, well, kind of in a one oh, because did you have I got Smith bored halfway. Well? I did Kevin Smith stuff, but then I did a whole bunch of horror stuff. Right, right. But I kind of had a rest in between putting them on. So they were split by about 12 hours or something. Like that. That's too bad, yeah. That's not bad. Done the dead. 
I rode on the dead, sold for 51 quid. There you go, man. Not bad. There you not go. as high as you got no, last year. Not, was it last not, year? Uh, I think it was just, still, just crept over 60 for mine. But um, Still, man, but fucking there's a new version coming out. There is indeed. You may as well sell Madness. sell yours and get the new one. Perfect. But anyway, should we move on to this week? Let's uh, do it. This, this week, sorry, this oh, episode. This episode. Oh, very important. <laughs> oh, oh. Very important. This episode's film. So, yes, uh, Dan Argento's 1987 Classic, I'm going to say. Yes. Early Doors. I think you classic uh, opera, uh, which many people, many people would say is his last truly great film. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know that you and I both enjoy films after this, but I don't think he actually bettered this yeah, after this. I think date. that's definitely a good point for discussion after we've kind of gone over it and things. Uh, it was definitely it something I wanted to bring up. Discussion. And it is, it's very. Because, you know, it's actually a lot of Argento fans, well, maybe not a lot, but a reason about don't really rate this film that much. So I know. it's a weird one. So God knows when things went wrong for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, God knows. God knows, I know. Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna start us off with a little synopsis. It is actually a genuinely little synopsis. <laughs> I had a look on Letterboxd and on IMDb to see if there was something sort of quite snappy that we could read. Mm-hmm. They're both exactly the same. One All was right. copied the other. I don't know which one. Probably Letterboxd has copied uh, IMDb. But anyway, here we go. Obsession, murder, madness. A young operata? What's an operata? A, a, a young opera, opera singer, I would say. An operata? I'm looking that up. Continue. Yeah, is it, <laughs> it's stopped by a deranged fan bent on killing the people associated with her to claim her for himself. Sounds absolutely fine. Yeah, it does oh, what it says in the tennis, right, there you go. Uh, uh, Oh. Actually, I didn't even think about it, but I actually have the uh, the, the the Blu-ray box right here as well. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna expand on that description at all. I don't think. No, I don't think no. Necessary. I think we're trying to get away from uh, seeing. T- it was going to be quite difficult in this film, to be honest, because um, there's things I definitely want to talk about uh, regarding things. No, I'll do my best, but I can't. Pro- I, I definitely won't tell you what happens at the end, the very very end. I won't tell you. Oh, I mean, I think we're not going to... Are we going to be able to avoid spoilers in this one? I would say no. If you've not watched it, Probably definitely not. stop listening to this. Yeah, I know we're trying to be a little I mean, bit less... Jesus. A bit more spoiler-free, but I just... I, I can't talk about this film without giving stuff away, I don't think. Uh, yeah, totally. And also, I, like, as we always say, I mean, Jesus Christ, if you're actually spending the time to listen to us witter on about something, then you should do yourself a favour and go and watch the film. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, shall we start off with our history with the film because we mentioned oh, it before oh that's true I never thought about, I, didn't, I didn't even make a note of that yeah yeah absolutely let's let's just say that let's go back to I don't know actually no, it came out a little bit later on video over here I think be a touch maybe. later later than 87 it hit problems with Orion and stuff but, but this was uh, my first Argento film mm-hmm. and it was you that introduced me to it mm-hmm. and you were introduced to the film by your VHS dealer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in a tiny, it's, it's, tiny, it sounds like, tiny it sounds like you operated off a street corner, but well, I suppose technically it did. <laughs> it, did. Uh, yeah. it was a shop on a street corner. Uh, but it was a video shop, and um, I used to get loads of various things from there. Um, 18 certificates, and I was nowhere near 18. But no. I think he just saw a kindred spirit and horror and just fired these things out. And then one day he said, I've got the new Dario Argento. And I uttered the immortal words who is Dario Argento <laughs> to which he was just like you call yourself a horror fan and you don't know who Dario Argento was I was like no I'm not this is before the internet and stuff like that I don't know where, I don't know what was going on um, so yeah so that was my first introduction so he didn't even rent it to me just woof, gave it to me just go and, nice. you got to go check that out immediately and nice. I was just like holy shit this is different level stuff and so that was my that was yeah that was my introduction to Argento and you know arguably I may have started with his best film. Well, it's a, it's an absolute belter. It is a total stutter. I mean, I I don't. This was my this has to be my entry as well. Yeah, it was so. you that got me into the world of horror. Sorry, and <laughs> well, sorry. Right. I mean, I, I suppose I'd been into watching. Uh, Horror films when they're on TV or whatever yeah, already yeah. by then, but I mean this was this is the sort of gateway drug in, and I guess part of that whole thing that you're talking about uh, with him saying, "Oh, you don't know about the Daddy Argento film." The only way to find out about films back then, especially with horror, was either by getting the monthly film bulletin, which then became Sight and Sound, yeah, 
which I didn't do because I was a kid. Yeah, God, and... I must, must have been that age and reading Sight and Sound, the most dry <sighs> magazine on the face of the planet. Heavy duty, heavy oh, duty. But I, and the other the other way to do it was to su- subscribe to the Dark uh, Dark Side. Dark, dark Side, side yeah, magazine. I think you're probably right. I can't imagine any other way you'd find out about stuff. And let's be, I don't think you know when you watched. That's the thing. You never got the box when you read the VHS. So. <clears throat> no, you didn't. So you, you couldn't even find any for, any more information no. just by looking at the box. No, no. no. And, fair well, enough. You can I watch mean, the credits, I guess. But yeah, I would. I don't think I can't remember watching a VHS back in the day. I can't remember watching Chud and thinking, oh, "I wonder who directed Chud." <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> Must look out for more of his stuff, and then to look out for more of his stuff, I'd have to systematically go through every single video in the shop. So that's never going to happen. Yeah, no. It's never no, going to exactly. say the front of the cover of Harvey's next film. Unless it was Chud too, it's never going to say from the director of Chud. Let's be honest. No, and a, a lot of the video shops as well. You would you'd occasionally get someone that knew their shit mm-hmm. behind the counter, but you'd often just get someone that was maybe a couple of years older than you in their sort of like high school weekend job. Yep, yep. They didn't give a shit about the job, didn't give a shit about the videos, and didn't actually want to speak to you. <laughs> so you're you're pretty much fucked. The other things that actually around that time that we were getting loads of information from were the Incredibly Strange Film Show. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. By Jonathan Ross. Absolutely classic. Gateway into a lot of madness. And Movie Drone. Yep, yep. Uh, which was great. Uh, actually connecting the dots as well so that when you started, when you saw a weird film, you'd probably seen the introduction and Alex Cox was like, oh, if you like this, you'll like this and this and check out this person. Yeah, yeah. But as you said, it was hard to get hold of anything. And we had to get... A lot of the crazy stuff, as we've said before, from like dodgy ads in the back of magazines. Well, that was it. I mean, you, you either did that, eggs. or or you couldn't get it at all, or you had to buy a version that was you know massively cut or whatever. Massively cut. And you, massively know, you never cut. want to do that. Let's be honest. No, I mean we'll get to that later on with this film as well. But uh, but anyway, yeah. So overall, opera. What what's your take on opera? So watching that again. I would like see when I sat down. Actually, my my the 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 last time I bought opera was an old Anchor Bay DVD uh, from many moons ago. Right. Um, which I think has has the soundtrack CD on it as well. Uh, oh, is it the? Um, yes, that's right. Yep, yep. I've still got mine. Edition. If you've got, you, uh, I think you've got yours I've there. I've still got it. You've got it there. Yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, mine's yeah, in the yeah. mine's under the eaves at the moment, along with the three discs Suspiria that they did back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. <coughs> I think I've actually. I think the three discs Suspiria is on there as well. Um, and so I, I'd not actually, I'd not seen opera for ages. It's a film I've been like really hoping will come out on Blu-ray as well because I've got such fond memories of it. Mm. It's just like. It's just really over the top and fun from the very beginning. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I, I held off watching it for. I mean, there have been Blu-ray versions, but I kind of look at them and think, I think there's there's going to be a better one. There's going to be a better one. I'm not the kind of person that will just buy whatever Blu-ray comes out unless I kind of trust the source. But um, I just thought there's bound to be one for the because none of them. I just got the impression none of them were scanned from an actual negative. You know, you can just yeah. kind of tell sometimes. If they don't see it, it generally means they've just found a version somewhere. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, yeah I waited. I waited, waited until this release um, by Cult Films that came out. Cult Films, um, yeah. And so, yeah, I, like yourself, absolutely super excited to fire that into the player. I was just like, yes. This is why my notes, like yours, are so sparse. <laughs> just like, I'm just going to watch this film. Fuck notes. Well, I've, I've got actually <laughs> zero notes about the content of the film. Yeah. And yeah. Actually, yeah, no, it pisses me off sitting trying to write notes in the dark anyway. I don't know how journalists do it uh, when they're reviewing films. But uh, I was like, no, I'm just going to sit back, enjoy this. Uh, and I absolutely loved it again. I, I was oh, slightly yeah. worried that... The passage of time and growing up a bit might make me uh, not not like it in some way. I don't know how. I don't. I don't know what I was thinking. But oh man, it's a it's a it's a total hoot. Well, I think you're right. It's, it's, it's always a little bit nervy going back to films that you've loved in the past but not seen for like a long, long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as I say, I was waiting for something as hopefully as good as it's going to be coming out, and had the same kind of apprehension. But one of the notes I made is like in the first six minutes are fucking unbelievably amazing and that was me I was instantly sucked right into it it was just like bang this is Argento at his absolute peak for me just like oh man and 
And Argento with a, a good bit of cash behind him as well. I mean, mm-hmm. like yep, yep. from the very start, I mean, this is a film that is, it looks amazing. Uh, the actual cinematography is absolutely fantastic. Yep. And it's just so densely populated yep. with people and extras and, and detail, sets yeah, and detail. Just... It's just fucking so unbelievable for a... Like crazy horror film from, like you know, from the from the from the late eighties. Absolutely, it's, just... it's absolutely wild. I mean, it's one of it's one of the um, one of the few notes I kind of made in the film is it just looks super accomplished, you know. Oh, totally, it's, totally. It's just like everything about it is like, wow, this is slick and brilliant and imaginative, really imaginative, and yeah. it's interesting because you know he's got that money, and. But I suppose in these days wasn't a lot of money. What was it, six million, eight million, or something? Eight million, yeah, like eight um, million, yeah. Which fair enough isn't a great deal of cash, but it's enough to get him to say like, "I want this to happen," and it fucking happens. Yeah, and you're like, totally. Yes. Totally. <laughs> I mean, like he was a like a big deal in Italy. Still, then, do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, still drawing in the crowds in the cinema, and I guess that's the thing that it's hard to think about over here is that. You know, this would be, I guess, the equivalent of like a you know a big horror film coming out now. I mean, people still do go and see horror films, but yep. this is like you know a sort of you know the equivalent of a sort of master of horror um, putting out a huge film that people will go and see. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, uh, I mean, That's... it unfortunately didn't get a release, a cinema release in the states. Yes, it was lined the, up for the one, timing, wasn't it, by the timing was very bad. Yeah, um, it's just when Orion went under. Just when they went under, and I think. Um, uh, one of the things I looked into is obviously they were looking at releasing a version that was quite heavily cut, not in terms of violence, but in terms of just the actual film itself. The plot, yeah, yeah, streamlining it down, eh? Yeah, like cutting. Oof, it was, man, it was it was a fair whack. It was like well over ten minutes anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think one of the things they mainly wanted to cut, which I can kind of get on board with, is the kind of the the end scene. Um, yeah. They wanted that to be cut pretty much entirely, and Darius and it was just like no, and it rumbled on so long to the point that they eventually went under, and it never got yeah. a theatrical release. Never got a, yeah. get theatrical release. I, it, it, I'd be interested to see what would have happened if it had done well, if it got a mainstream cinema release in the states, and people had gone to see it. Yeah, I can't. Weirdly, I can't imagine it doing that well in the States. It's, it's, still... it's just not a mainstream film by any chalk. It's not. No. <laughs> and I mean, the yeah, I mean, straight away, the dubbing's going to throw Americans like, yeah. off a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, you know? as, it, as it did us, I would imagine. But... Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, when the, the and I, I, you can you can kind of see Ryan's point uh, with the with the the coda at the end, which like I you know I enjoy, but it's completely out of left field. Oh, yeah, it comes totally. from fucking nowhere. Absolutely, so it's totally transposes the film. Just flash forward, but it kind of makes sense when you. Uh, uh, oh, well, I mean, what well, does it make sense? No, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's weird, obviously not giving away the end of it. It's yeah, the, it's there's a there's a gaping plot hole. Yeah, yeah, gaping. <laughs> totally. It's like it just how did you up not realise like, that that was that? You're having yeah, a laugh. But... <laughs> <laughs> so you're trying to yeah. tell me your phrases, guys, didn't pick up on that within two days. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> totally was it? It's like six months later or something, isn't I, it? No, I think I don't think it's that. No, I think it's. <laughs> isn't it? No, I think it's only a few days after the. Oh, is it? All I right, think. Okay. I think. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, yeah, I, I I kind of in my mind thought it was like weeks or months later, which would have made it even more mad. But uh, yeah, to be honest, even you know, more than if it had been more than thirty seconds, <laughs> it would yeah. have been implausible. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if uh, when I was watching it, I wondered if because uh, it, well, I mean, it's not giving anything away, but the the end of the film is uh, set in the Alps, yeah, uh, of all places. I I, I wondered if uh, if Dario had just enjoyed being there when he was shooting Phenomena and had thought, I'll just net back. Quite fancy, it's quite nice. Quite fancy we yeah, all <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this money we've got. Well, we've got some spare cash. Let's go do bring, it. Let's let's go for a wee. Bring yeah. the family. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> But I mean, he like getting slightly more into specifics of it. Like uh, he, the film looks fucking incredible the whole way it through. Does, it does. Uh, cinematography by Ronnie Taylor, who 
won a fucking Oscar for Gandhi yep. in 1982. Yep. I mean, shit. And who actually went on to shoot a couple of other Argento films um, after this as well? Unfortunately, one of them's Phantom of the Opera, which yeah. you made me watch. Yeah. yeah. I don't like Phantom of the no, Opera. No, it's not good. Uh, but it also did Sleepless, which I did actually quite like. I really enjoy it. You know what? I, well, very briefly, the, the opening scene in Sleepless is absolute it's just quintessential Orzeno at the top of his game uh, I've got to be honest the rest of the film doesn't quite match that but it is fucking no. honestly you watch the start of that it's like wow this is you know, potentially one of his best ever scenes it's absolutely amazing yeah. um, and it's plenty to enjoy after that but it does struggle it's too long as well it struggles a bit um, but yeah as you say the camera work is this is the whenever I kind of think about Argento at the peak of he's always known for his camera work camera moves you yeah. know, the big shot in Tenebrae Tenebrae yeah all yeah, that yeah. kind of business the shots and phenomena over the trees and stuff like that cool stuff like that but the camera work in this is just wall to wall never stops being fucking tremendous yeah so many things in it the scene the overhead shot in the apartment um, yeah and Betty is just ah. Oh, Really, and it's not there for just some bullshit reason. It's, it's actually it's really tense. It's really good. And, you know, I've, yeah, I've never really seen a scene like it. Um, you know, following that kind of person under threat, but just completely overhead and just following them into every room. It's just like yeah. how have they? How, and you look at this it's like, what? They, how did they do it? <laughs> you know, yeah. It's just, I know because uh, there's a uh, there's loads of great location work in it as well, but in like these huge vast rooms and open spaces yeah. that are just like uh, it's like yeah it really is incredible. I mean, all that sort of a- the loads of the aerial stuff in uh, inside the opera oh, as well. Oh, that's with the, so good, so with good with the birds. And then the I mean, we're, well, we'll, we're, I think you've got a list of the murders one by one. We should hammer through those as well, probably. No, don't, but, no don't get me wrong. I think I might have given you the wrong impression at the start. Oh no, okay. you have not. <laughs> Well, I'm sure we can piece it together. But, but uh, I mean, uh, and then to stuff like the incredible and rightly famous um, death of Daria Nicolodi oh, with the oh. uh, the bu- bullet through the through the looking glass, yeah, oh, uh, through the, wow. the peephole in the door. It's absolutely incredible. And talking about the murders, this as like as you know, as a horror fan, this film has it all. Really, doesn't oh, it? it? Del- I mean, it's got some fucking horrendous. It's uh, you know if you're a gore Horrendous. fan, this film delivers in spades, and it's actually I I, find, I, I was looking, I think this seems like a lot gorier than his other stuff. But and it, but I think that the big thing I, that I felt with it watching this time is it feels like really real violence. Mm. The blood's I mean? got like a really authentic blood color, and oh, the man. just the actual trauma of it is much more kind of in reality oh. than a lot of his other films. God. The murder of uh, the the murder of uh, oh. the Stefan, the Bruce, stage Bruce manager, Stefano. Oh dearie me, Stefano. Oh man. Well, it's a starting off with that unbelievably classic, like stab under the chin oh. into the mouth. Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> I'm all tired of cinema. I mean, cinematography, and that's another thing as well. I got to the end of it, and I was like, shit, who did the fucking special effects for this? And like the designer the special effects designer was a guy called uh, Renato Agostini I I you know I didn't know his name at the time and I still don't really know his name no, do you know what I mean no. I'm like, it's fucking phenomenal um, but uh, that, that after he's been stabbed in the throat if, as if that isn't bad enough <laughs> it seems to take for ages getting stabbed in the hand oh that's horrendous man Absolutely. Well, there's defensive, defensive wounds, and it's kind of like it's, it's like the blade man. is like a fucking, it's almost like a trowel. <laughs> <laughs> totally, it's like some sort of theatrical oh, dagger. Honestly, or that's horrific. It, honestly, Jesus it Christ, just, it's, that is a shocking, shocking scene of war. And and I'd completely forgotten as well um, that I, I mean, it's always, it's always stuck in my mind as one of the most standout murders of any film. Um, but the 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 costume designer, yeah, yeah, getting murdered. There's something about like, like just her eyes when she's dead as well. Even yeah, it's just yeah. absolutely horrendous. But the I'd completely forgotten about the scissors in the mouth. 
Yeah, that's, that's grim. Oh, man. Very, I've, very I forgot grim. about that. It's sort of, and it instantly reminded me of uh, Deep Red, the teeth yep. as well. <laughs> well, Darren's oh, he's, he's got a few teethy Dan, kind of... He's got a sort of teeth trauma thing going horrendous on. Horrendous one in Stendhal oh, Syndrome. Oh, oof. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a film that uh, I've been wanting to watch again of late. Yeah, but I think when a um, decent version comes up, we'll be back on that. But I mean, every single murder is, is great in it. The special effects are fantastic, like top notch. And there's good, they, they are horrendous enough to make it like proper horror worthy. Yeah, and but they're, they're at well the same time, it's, it's as well. really inventive as well. And it's, yeah. And obviously, you've got Betty who's made to watch all the, well, certainly a decent amount of the uh, gruesomeness with the very yeah. inventive sellotaped needles under her eyelids so she can't close her eyes it's just like oh holy shit <laughs> yeah. honestly I like it said, you know well, well, I'll get on to the bleary thing later but I think yeah I think Arzena was at some point says he was just like racking his brain to think of the most far out not even not just the murders, but just the whole thing—the most far out, left field, weird shit he could possibly think of. And man, he's absolutely nailed it. <laughs> man, he has pulled it off in this one, and it, it's one of the—I mean, it made for a really amazing uh, sleeves and poster art back in the day. Oh yeah, that sort of that sort of imagery of her eyes with the uh, with the, with the needles. But it's actually really funny watching it this time around. I was like. It would only they would only go in your eye in your eyes if you scrunched up your face like yeah. you're a proper comedy I mean, scrunch your eyes. Yeah, there's a def, there's a definite slightly <laughs> right. You could have suspend a little bit of uh, yeah, 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 totally. But it's a really, really beautiful, as a horror, for a horror film. It's a great. It's idea. It's a really beautiful idea. Yeah, it's yeah. a really great idea. And um, so uh, Betty, mm-hmm. Christina Marsalak. I'm going to torture her name as again. we always do. Like, yeah, as we always do. It's a tradition in this show. Um, Spanish actress, um, absolutely brilliant in this as well. I thought she is really good. I got to say, I she's really good. Uh, Especially after that. watching the uh, behind the scenes. Oof, dear me. And what's going on with uh, with her being called Betty? Yeah, it's a bit odd. I don't really can't. I don't really figure that out. Because <laughs> like, she's not meant to be American or anything, is she? No. No, I don't think so. And this is this is sort of heyday of Argentino just shooting everybody speaking their own language, isn't it? Argentino, who's that? Argentino, Argento, <laughs> Bobby Argentino. <laughs> Bobby. Oh, do you know Bobby Argentino? Oh, he's a great director. He's uh, done some really good Kit Kat adverts, uh, a couple of Pims adverts. Bobby Argentino is a beast. He cannot be stopped. Um, he's maybe not quite as good as Argento, but he's he's up there. He's getting there. Does it? Does he does he tend to shoot his films in multiple languages at the same time? Um, for the sake of conversation, no, he doesn't. Oh, but, but anyway, I, I thought she was great. Um, what about uh, Marco? What do you what do you make of Marco? Um, Ian Charlson, a fellow countryman of ours. Indeed, born in uh, this very city that I sit in. Yes, uh, Edinburgh born chap, uh, mostly a stage actor, um, but obviously notably Chariots of Fire and Gandhi. So a couple of reasonably big films, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, well, I, actually, I, I don't think I'd mentioned earlier on, but um, Ronnie Taylor obviously works with uh, Ian Charleston on Gandhi, and uh, Ronnie Taylor actually won the Oscar for that. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Oscar winning cinematographer. Wow. In, there you go. And you get. Uh, and yeah, Ian Charleston, fantastic. Shame we didn't get to see more of him. Died uh, tragically young. Yeah, in, it was in interesting. 90. I think he was what, diagnosed with AIDS in '86, and basically made the decision to kind of stop working pretty much not obviously a, a bit after opera but yeah, yeah. Uh, so this was his last film this was his last his last film yeah and he uh, just uh, he refused to go to America and work after Chariots and Gandhi and stuff just like a obviously a slightly a new I'd be, I'd be, I'd be great there's an interview with him somewhere knocking around I'd quite like to hear from that guy Oh yeah, totally. I haven't actually looked at the old uh, the old DVD mm. to see what's actually on it. No. Extras wise, I might have a little look at that and see. Um, but yeah, I thought he was fantastic in it as well. There's only really uh, a couple of other sort of actors of note really in it. Uh, Daniel Nicolodi, uh, Argento's ex ex wife by this stage. Yep, yep. He's, they still went on to work together after that. Um, they did go on to work together after this, uh, but I mean, she's well. I mean, what, what she was what Deep Red, Inferno, Tenebrae, Phenomena. And of course, the classic um, Mother of Tears. I've never seen Mother of Tears. I've still not seen it. 
Oh, you should actually. It's fun. Yeah. If you go into the yeah. right mindset, you'll be all right. <laughs> I think we were going to watch it yours at some point. Yeah, we probably got. You've got it on blue, got... haven't you? Uh, or is it DVD? Did. Oh fuck! It's one of the ones that got stolen. Yep. Um, and uh, the only uh, really uh, Urbano. Ah, uh, here's another one. I'm going to merge. Ur- Urbano Barberini. Oh, that sounds perfect. Oh, she's, she's got a bit of a uh, Italian horror uh, ped- pedigree, you know? Or is that someone else? Thinking? No, who am I it's thinking a, he's, he's Inspector Santini. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, that's a mistake I made. I was, I've kind of had a wee look at it. I was like, why are they talking about... Oh, it's, it's a man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big, big Barbara uh, Santini. <laughs> well, the one... The, the thing, and the thing about him uh, that I want to find out is... Uh, and I think we should get onto the dubbing quite quickly as well and then leave it <laughs> the quite quickly and the soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> is that apparently so he his his voice was so white his dubbed voice was ridiculed so widely when our general screened this at can that they redubbed it with the voice we heard in this i want to, what I want to hear that original can cut i can't even begin to imagine what the original <laughs> totally. one was like Hello, no everybody. <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was supposed to be like. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, the dubbing's quite wild in this. It's There's out of control. A hell of a like, basically Cockney geezers. I wonder if they like set the film off to get dubbed in like Soho or something. Do you know what I mean? It's like every single person in the theater is, despite it clearly being shot like it's set in Italy. Yeah. Every single stagehand is like, all right, come down. <laughs> <laughs> and it's quite an intense. Um, the sound mix in the film is fucking intense. There's a lot going on in it. Oh, yeah, There's yeah. a lot of like layered, uh, just chatter and noise. It was and odd. I was like, stuff. some things like, we'll get back more into the Blu ray, but some of things came out at the back because I was like, what the fuck is going on here? It was almost, almost like it was above the scene or something or it yeah. was like is there somebody outside my window <laughs> what's going on here totally not <coughs> and uh, so, so <laughs> and what i think both of us uh, have probably got the same note uh for the soundtrack i've just Oof. got absolutely mad it's completely you know it is <laughs> it goes between sublime to the absolutely god awful i mean so <laughs> So generally, when you're making a film, <laughs> you either go for like you well, you generally have one person doing the soundtrack for the film. I'd say, yep. or maybe you do like a collection of you know pop songs or something like that. You know, it's almost like a sort of greatest hits, yep, sort of yep, compilation yep. or something like that. Here we've got <laughs> Brian Eno and his brother Roger. It's a star for ten, isn't it? Yeah, we'd have thought if you, just if you get them on board, out, just just keep with them, maybe. Well, exactly, <laughs> whacking out some sort of ambient electronica. You've got Claudio Simonetti. Yep, doing Claudio Simonetti. Doing so Simonetti. You've got Bill Wyman from the Stones. Yep. So all th- all all three of these different <laughs> sets like, of people, now vastly different, are all vastly different. All very interesting, but then. You've got Steel Grave Oof. and Northern Light. Oh God! What the? F- There's some horrendous. I'd like. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm a metal fan. I'm going to put that out there. I enjoy my metal, but I was like, this is fucking tragic. It's fucking torture, isn't it? Oh. And the thing. And then, and then on top of that, you've got all oh, the fucking opera. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yes, Jesus exactly, Christ. exactly. And you've got like a heavy duty opera thing going on as well. It's absolutely bonkers. Hell of a Verdi. And you've got. I mean, I guess. Uh, what was our general uh, before? So his film before this was Phenomena, and he sort of skirted with a sort of mix of metal, prog, and ambient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for for that, and they went full scale. Uh, <laughs> he's just gone full scale bonkers here. At least he had the sense in Phenomena to actually have some decent metal in it. Yeah, a bit of maiden. Can't argue with that. Who the fuck were these guys? Who... Honestly, it's the worst. I've never even heard of them. <laughs> no, I don't think, neither have I. It's absolutely horrendous. <laughs> truly, truly horrendous. Yeah, I've got to be honest, it does mar the film for me a little bit. Um, especially when we're talking about the, the camera stuff and the absolutely fucking phenomenal shot of the uh, Raven's point of view. I won't tell you if we get to this. Um, descending on an audience in the opera. Yeah. And man, it's fucking insane how close the camera gets to those yeah. people. 
and and you see the rig for it in the uh, behind the scenes, and it is absolutely bewildering. You will not have seen anything like this in your entire life. Those people must have been genuinely terrified. That that descending onto you, and you look at it now. It's like I mean that is an actual camera. It's like that wouldn't be done now. It'd be a wild digital effect. They just wouldn't bother yeah. putting it. They wouldn't even do. They wouldn't spend the time doing a, a shot like that. And God, no, God knows how long it took them to do it. Jesus. Well, plus we're talking. It's like a thirty-five mil film camera. Oh yeah, it's a big beast. It's not, you know, it's not like uh, they could even just, you know, fire up a sort of red digital camera or something like that yeah. and just sort of zip it around. No. Yeah, no chance. Fucking Absolute massive monster. rigging. Absolute beast. If that came down, lots of dead, <laughs> lots of dead people. <laughs> There's an image that I nearly lost my mind at <laughs> when I was watching the behind the scenes stuff where they're in, in the middle of that theatre, they're throwing, throwing birds around all over the place. There's a guy like up a ladder with a fishing pole with a bird on the end of it. <laughs> And there's another, in the background, you can see a scaffold platform. And on top of the scaffold platform is a rickety wooden ladder. And on top of the rickety ladder, there's a cameraman. Yeah. Like, like, he must be about 20 feet off the ground. <laughs> it's absolute insanity. Oh, I love it so much. It's a total free-for-all. And everyone's just, like, shouting and running around. And it's just, like, to- it looks like absolute, absolute chaos. It just looks like I mean, bedlam, I work, man. It really does. <laughs> I work in film sets all the time. Yeah, I've been on some chaotic sets. I've never been on anything anywhere near as mental as that. <laughs> 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 Usually, everything's a really tightly run ship. That is nuts. Uh, I want to say it's just been this flailing arms, people just shouting instructions. It must have been the most confusing oh, thing totally, known to my birds totally. fucking flying all over the shop. <laughs> Everyone's speaking in their own language, just totally, oh, absolutely I bonkers. love it. Just the mayhem, but I've just like reveled in it. All that chaos has come together and made a fucking cracking film. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... Oh God, I love it so much, and yeah, yeah same here. I'd highly recommend it. Definitely highly recommend. it. I mean, it. again, for you, let's. Where does this sit in Dario's Animals canon with you? Pretty high up there, and I, but I don't really know if it's. Um, I don't really know if it's just my love of it as a kid. I thoroughly enjoyed watching it again the other mm. night. Absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. I find it. It's interesting coming to it on the back of Birds of Crystal Plumage. Yep. Yep. Which is thoroughly entertaining, but you almost can't connect the two films. Do you know what I mean? He's gone through such a journey. Yeah. You can see flashes of it. I mean, they're from completely different eras as well, of course. Yeah. You yeah. know, the, the, the distance of time between them. But I would say, for me, if I was going to sit down and watch an Argento film, I would be talking opera. Yeah. Tenebrae. Yeah. Yeah. Not far before this, a phenomena as well. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I I reckon, I think maybe the eighties are the era for me. Although I'm not a big fan of Inferno. No, Inferno's yeah, it can be a bit tough sometimes. I think it's uh, the look of Inferno isn't great for me. But you know, I'm gonna make oh good man, I'm gonna make a controversial statement here. Right here we go. Let's go for uh, it. This is a controversial it. statement. The lighting and the lighting in this film is fucking. Transcendent man, it's absolutely <laughs> phenomenal, and I'm going it to is. say the lighting in this is better than Spirit. What? Yes, I am. I'm saying that what? right now. I know it doesn't look anything like it, but I'm just. It doesn't look anything like it. It's just, a different. But the, if you just look at side sides of the frame and stuff, and how things are falling, it's just like, man, the atmosphere is just. Oh, it's fucking amazing. It is great. I mean, it is great. I'm going to be hard pushed not to say this is my favourite Argento. I'd like to go oh. back and revisit ones I've not maybe watched for a little while, but I just think everything about this is just, man, this is such a shame. A guy at the top of his game and then the film just basically collapses because the company went under. No one saw it for fucking ages. Yeah. An absolute travesty. I mean, I wonder what would have happened if this had come out as intended. Who knows? Um, but it's basically a, it's basically a forgotten film in a way, which is just blows yeah, my mind. It's definitely, it's definitely one of his lesser films, really. Um, and it is interesting speaking to younger people that are are gentle fans and coming to. It. Quite often, speak to people that are, you know, they know Suspiria, 
you know, the actually, you know, weirdly compared to when we were kids, um, you know, you hadn't heard of Cat and Nine Tails and yeah, yeah. Birds of Crystal Plumage or Four Flies and Grey Velvet. Like, bizarrely, those films are sort of more well known. I think people have tended to go back from Suspiria or taken that as a starting point or, you know, gone Suspiria, Deep Red and then gone back a bit. But I mean, I, I, lots of people don't really just just don't know about this it hasn't had a lot of releases over here as well that's true you that's know? the thing so, it, you know, again it kind of got it just got lost in a while and it's uh only really now it's kind of i mean i know arrow released it on dvd quite a while ago um yeah. which i never picked up because it was a dvd um yeah. already had a dvd fair enough it was an ntsc but i wouldn't have a great deal of difference um but yeah seeing it in blu-ray and it just i, f- I fucking love it I absolutely love yeah. it. I put it on. I could have put it on straight away again, and I yeah, don't totally. see that about Same many here. films. I don't see that about no. many or gentle films, but any or gentle films. I don't think. Um, but there's just ah, there's so much to love in this film, you know, especially yeah. for you know for oh, just man for a horror fact for a general horror fact like a lot of our gentle stuff. You look at the early stuff. You know, the genre stuff, quite thriller-based, um, not particularly gory or whatever. I mean, if you're a horror fan, I cannot see you not just fucking loving this film. Yeah, it's full-on horror. I mean, well, I think we'll, um, we're, I think it's easy to say that both of us are giving it a very clear two thumbs up. Yes, I think that's, that's, that's a, yeah, it's a pretty decent... Even though we don't technically do ratings on this. No, no, we, I think but, it's... But we are. Yeah. Uh, yep, I'll put all my thumbs up. I'll find a third one if I can. It's absolutely a work of genius. Yep, I'm in full agreement. Excellent. All right, well, is it time for a blue review? Oh, let's. Woo, blue! It's the Blu-ray Reviews, yeah. Blue! It's the Blu-ray Reviews, yeah. Blue! It's the Blu-ray Reviews, yeah. Blue! It's the Blu-ray Review. Both of us have watched the latest release of uh, opera blu-ray uh, copy which has been released in the uk by cult films yep don't know much about cult films i, I think they God, are I, I think they are part of or highly affiliated shameless shameless mm. yeah um and uh i've not actually looked at the suspiria that they put out recently i have um does it look good it does look good. It's interesting. I think it was... Was it Shout Factory they put out the American one? I can't remember. Yeah. Um, theirs looks more saturated. Now, I will... When I'm, like, colour grading stuff, I kind of... I quite like to saturate things a bit more. Yeah. So, the Shout Factory, Suspiria, I've only seen screenshots from it, but look a bit more pleasing. But, you know, definition-wise, no real difference. Um... And again, there's another version of this in the States. Is it? I don't know who did it. But, um, I've looked at screenshots and it is slightly more saturated. So looking at the screenshots, I was like, I would like to see that other version. Um, but that's just me. That's just a personal thing. But at the same time, it looks absolutely terrific. It looks fucking incredible. It really does. Um, I was overjoyed when I put it in. Like, like you, yeah, I'd sort of held off on previous releases. A, because it was a, a DVD. And uh, also... I was just sort of waiting to see. I think the DVDs, the DVD prints in the past, like it was clear that they didn't have a new, like access to yeah, yeah. the negatives. Well, especially and there wasn't Arrow. Any way I, mean, to Arrow really, I don't think Arrow really started um, grabbing negatives until yeah, fairly recently, to be honest. Yeah, doing full restorations. It's good that lots of the little companies seem to be working together in the states and over here as well. Mm. So, but I mean, this was this this wasn't a crowdfunder. This was it. It wasn't. That was just a spirit, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But um, I actually was holding off getting this for a long time. I was like, ah, I'll just wait till it. And then you would pointed out that it was actually out. It came out significantly earlier. Yeah. If you bought it directly from the company, is it even and out just, now? Actually, I don't know. But I suppose by the time by the time this comes out, it yes, should, it yeah, by the time this comes out, it will be. <laughs> so I actually snapped it up straight away, and yeah, it is. Uh, it's fucking. It is magnificent. Beautiful slipcase. The slipcase has some uh, custom art. Actually, says Terror of the Opera at the bottom of it as well, which I hadn't noticed before. Yeah, um, and and that's something we didn't mention in that. I actually like Terror of the Opera as the title. Ah, I know. I prefer that opera. 
I think Terror. Yeah, I think Terror. The Opera, like terror I think Terror the Opera just cheapens it. Oh, maybe you're right. Bad terror bad. at the Opera. No, oh, fuck that. Fuck laugh. The Opera, uh, nice, classy, love it. The uh, Inner Sleeve is the classic. Uh, the 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 classic uh, cinema artwork, which, which I've got. A, just... I've got a lobby poster for that. Oh, have you? Fucking yeah. hell. Nice. Hopefully I'll get that signed one of these days. You never can tell. I, oh, I'd need a frame maybe the maybe size you'll... of this room, but hey ho. Yeah, you you I'm sure you I'm sure you can get it signed. Mind you. Argento's not looking that healthy in the uh, pretty, he yeah. never has though, has no, he? No, he He never has, to be fair. Um and yeah, it, the the, the Blu-ray looks absolutely fantastic. Sounds great as well. Although both of us opted to watch the English subtitle, the English. Yeah, I was track. going to do the Italian, but unfortunately, I, I, I got I, I went. Can... I just put it into a YouTube wormhole for about two hours and had a few beers. I was like, I'm going to need some English audio here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, th- they've they've really focused on getting the print right and getting the sound right. I think. Yeah. Which is fantastic. There's, there's no, there's, there's basically the extras aren't that extensive on this. There's like a forty minute, quite weird, um, backstage footage thing. Yeah, it's, it's, which it's is very much one of those kind of uh, behind the scenes where it is just behind the scenes. Just it's literally behind the scenes. There's yeah. no commentary at all. But there's it, no. Arzeno was kind of fascinating to watch on it because he looks like a fucking madman all the time. Oh, totally. I mean, it's great to watch like the actual sort of. But I mean, it literally is just straight up video footage mm. of the making mm. of it. There's no, there's no attempt at editing it or any sort of explanation of what's going on at all. No. But it's a sort of fascinating insight into the back. Uh, there's a new new uh, documentary which I believe is about forty minutes as well. Um, with Argento, I, I, I didn't actually get it's, into it. It's, 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 I, I watched it the season before we came on. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's basically an interview. Uh, with like very badly interspersed, it's it's not well put together. I'm gonna be honest. The interview itself is fine, and then they sort of intersperse things that make no sense. Uh, but some things that do, but it's just like yeah, you can just tell they're just trying to cover the fact they've only got one camera angle on Argento. I think. Um, yeah. I would say if you've read a lot about the film, if you've listened to what or, or read about what Argento had to say about the film, you won't get a great deal of new information from it. Um, but it is nice to see him ramble on about it's it. It's nice that, yeah, nice to have and uh, g- good to watch, I guess. Um, the there's also a restoration feature, yeah, uh, feature on the process. It says here for the process, uh, from Roscan to the regraded restored final vision, it's quite interesting, but again, it's not actually a feature, it's just it's just side by side showing side by side comparison which is actually quite cool it's quite a, it's quite interesting and quite cool what I, I will shocked. say if you've got the um, cult film Suspiria they also have a restoration uh, but it's not featurette <laughs> oh, it goes on for ages and it's a guy with the driest voice known to man explaining exactly what they did step by step but now when I heard when I saw it was on there as an extra feature on the Suspiria I was like oh this is going to be amazing and within five minutes like I am bored to tears because I do a lot of colour grading and stuff myself and it's like no this is horrendous <laughs> it's just I couldn't watch it all so this was actually just quite nice to see what they had to start with and what they came up with at the end it's very short and it's yeah it's it's it's, well, it's, it's the th- the thing that I thought was most interesting is you can see what a you can see what state the original negative's in mm-hmm. and what it looks like when it's in the camera before it's been processed, and you can see what the original freight you know because it like shot Super Thirty Five yeah and basically is like a square yeah um it's almost full like, frame it's not it's not masked into two three five to one yeah oh yeah, maybe, so they, could, maybe they could release it, the maybe they could release it in imax <laughs> well the thing oh, that'd be amazing can you imagine this in imax yeah hey, man. Hey. well one of the things i was seeing today was saying that um that one of the benefits of it at the time was you could basically release films pan and scan effectively right as well so you could you could mask it into your preferred vision, but you'd also you also had a sort of full frame version that was good to go without having to 
do the sort of pan and scan process of like actually moving around right, on the right. frame. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see, and it's it's a good uh, visual uh, display of how great the new pre- how the, the restoration is and like yep. how good the color coloring is yep. yeah but it's absolutely superb. i think it, well, so yeah the, i mean the last thing i'd say about this blu-ray is i i popped it into my uh blu-ray player on the computer just to have a look at the or interview um and well, how long is this film an hour and 40 uh, odd? An 47 it is a 43 gigabyte disc ay 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 so they have Max the bit rate out of this and it shows it looks fucking tremendous it does look tremendous excellent happy days love mm-hmm. it so on to our and well sorry would you recommend uh, well I think we both recommend this disc then don't we it's yeah. not ch- it's not cheap I'd say as well no but uh, I think it's worth it it's worth it if you've got a small company it. putting this kind of effort uh, come in, on come on let's exactly. just get them exactly. just support them you fucking dicks sorry just do it <laughs> just do it <laughs> um, and so okay moving on uh, our next regular feature uh, what would James Furman think James Furman was the director of the British Board of Film Censorship sorry classification from 1975 to 1999 and we ask ourselves what would James Furman do what would James Furman do what would James Furman say? We ask, what would James Furman do? Tell us, James, what would you say? We actually know what James Furman thinks. We do. Yep, yep. Um, the film, James Furman decided to cut it by 47 seconds. Yep, indeed. Did you look up what the 47 seconds were? Uh, yes, I did. Um, I went to I... my usual site, Melon Farmers, which is... I wouldn't recommend you type in Melon Farmers and just type in Melon Farmers <sighs> in Google and then the name of the film you're looking for. Don't just go to the website. It is... It looks least... exactly the same as when it was made <laughs> years ago. It's a complete it, clusterfuck. Well, <laughs> it, it does, and the front page is awash with... Uh, pornography ads. Their, 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 yeah, pornography <laughs> ads. <laughs> they seem to be sponsored by some sort of um, mechanical sex machine company. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Just quite insane. But anyway, um, yeah, it's great. I actually, I went... I actually went over for a bit more information to... Now, where? Let me see if I can find it. Um, a website, which I don't think I've been on before, called uh, moviecentorship.com. Actually, I kind of kind of recognise it a bit. It's good. It actually shows you... It's got clips of the frames uh, that have been cut, so you can see what's cut. Um, so we've got the costume girl getting the scissors put into her mouth. Yep. That whole thing was cut. Yep. Uh, but weirdly, the scissors going into her mouth is what was cut because yeah. there's actually there's no shots of the knife going into her throat. Do you anyway. think that was like some sort of sexualization thing or something? I don't know. It's just weird. Weird mm. that they did that. Um, lots of cuts to Stefano's death. Yes, uh, which was fa- expected. Yep. <laughs> shit loads of cuts. Like mainly, so all sight of the knife going through into his mouth. Yep. Uh, and l- most of the stuff of his hands getting stabbed is all being cut away. But then weirdly, the rest of the cuts were a woman's hands getting tied near the start. Yeah. yeah. In, the, in the flashback scene. Yep. What is like, what was going on? I'm not sure it weirds me <laughs> out. I just kind of I can kind of vaguely understand it, I guess. Um Again, That's I think it's a sexualization thing. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it will have been it will have been actually. Yeah. But all the cuts were waived um after Fairman was gone, two thousand two actually, which is I think the Yeah, I was interested died, with it. So. I think it's I think the first one that was actually read was the one that had been cut in the states. Um, yes. So yeah, obviously the PBFC didn't have anything to do with the storyline cuts, but those were the bits of violence, violence cuts. that they cut. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we actually will have seen a much shorter version uh, when we saw it on video. Although did yeah. did Doig have it on? Was it a 
an international version they have. I am going to be honest, I don't remember that far back. Don't remember. Um, yeah, I don't remember. Do I. I, was thinking, I was trying to recall it as well today, but no, nah, I couldn't do, couldn't <laughs> do. Um, But it is a film that I remember getting bootleg copies of yep. um, after seeing the rental version and get, finally getting hold of the uncut version, which I th- think pro- I think my first bootleg copy of it was a Jap- maybe from a Japanese laser disc or something. Oh, classic. It certainly classic. had a <laughs> classic textbook. I uh, certainly had lots of um, uh, lots of uh, mashed on subtitles on it anyway and was probably pretty ropey quality. <laughs> As um, always. So, yeah, I mean, Furman... I mean, Furman got his scissors out, didn't he? He was reaching for his scissors. He did. I think it's a pretty mild cut. Um, it's a, it is a surprisingly mild. I mean, he could have gone for more than the film, I think, as well. Yeah, but... yeah. Um, I think, I, you know, I think when I was looking it up, I thought, oh, I bet they've cut that first murder to absolute ribbons. Um, and, and they have. That was that was yeah. one that really stood out for me because it was extremely gory and really savage. Um, it is horrendously gory, isn't it? Yeah, and it's just, it's brutal. It's horrible. It's a minging murder. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that after getting stabbed through the throat, he's alive for the whole rest yeah, of the Yeah, just fucking the hands the are so bad. Oh, oh dearie me. God. Um, so I guess it's probably a fairly, it's an easy decision because we know what the decision was. He's, he's yeah. reaching. Reaching for the for scissors. scissors. Yeah. He is. He was reaching for the scissors. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good old it's Furman. A, it's, a, it's a fairly mild Furman rating there. But, it's um, a mild Furman rating. Don't, don't, let, don't let that put you off. <laughs> I wonder if he, because uh, he was famous for, you know, sort of thinking, uh, you know, you know, being an artiste himself, because yep. he'd been a director in the past. Yeah, I was going to bring uh, that Sort of yep, going yep. easy on stuff that was actually good. I wonder if he actually thought it was good. I think you can't fail to see the technical finesse in this. Yeah, totally. You really oh, can. man. I mean, actually, it's probably, it was probably like, you know, shit, the DOP won an Oscar for, for, yeah, for totally. candy. <laughs> yeah. He was probably mates with them, actually. <laughs> So, <laughs> so there we go. And um, moving on to our latest, yep. our newest Wait, so I'm not, not going to give it a theme tune. I think this is going to be very no short. Theme tune? No, I don't no. think so. No, excellent. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, John John's, and it's an excellent idea, John. I oh, love thank it. you, thank you. I love it. Just uh, came to idea. Me. <laughs> love it or list it. Yep, um, based on it. I don't know if you're in the UK, you may have seen a. Uh, is it Kirsty Alsop and Phil, somebody or other, who do the property shows and they do uh, yep. Love It or List It, um, where they do up someone's home or they could buy another one. It's slightly different in that case. We're not going to do our Blu-rays up. That'd be weird. Um, yep. Maybe get the kids to draw a picture of them. Um, so, yeah, Cammy. Uh, as we're always talking about getting rid of our stock of Blu-rays and stuff, Yeah. this film, Love It or List It. Love it. Absolutely no doubt about it. There's no way this is getting listed. I am 382% behind you. <laughs> <laughs> and t- I, do you know what? The only... I, I I can't even get rid of the DVD copy I've got. Yeah, totally. It's one if of those films, If it came out in 4K, it? I'd probably buy it in 4K. If it came out in Lego, I'd probably buy it. Oh, totally. Oh, <laughs> Lego version would be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> totally. No, I think it's a, it's a definite love it for me. Um, so... Uh, bad luck, everyone. You won't be seeing my copy on eBay anytime soon. Nope, nope. Just go. All you have to do is get yourselves over to the uh, Kelp Film site and buy a copy. Yes. Don't buy it from, over there. Don't buy from Amazon. There's no point buying from Amazon. You'll save a quid. D- Give it to the guys. Don't Give it to the fucking, guys. Yeah, don't buy it from Amazon. Get over there and support uh, support Cult Films. Get the film bought from them. Give them, give them your hard-earned cash. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, that has been brilliant. I'm. Do you know what, John? I'm... <laughs> loving this podcast because we're getting to just re- revisit well A we get to sit and talk nonsense but B Obviously. we're getting to revisit some classics as well it's great man it's like as you we're say who cares if anyone's classics. listens which is probably quite well, as, who gives a shit? it's just as well <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> hi Dave um, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> so uh, let's let's we, we had a little discussion before we came on here yep about what we'd gone next yep our yep. tenuous link yep uh, so our uh, it's actually it's not ten years. It's not. It's, 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 this might be one. one of our best links yet. We've got several links for this one. So this film, obviously, it's called Opera. It's got a very theatrical theme, set in the opera. Lots of stage stuff. We are going to go for nineteen eighty-seven. Well, it's the same year as well. Yeah, they're linked by year as well. Oh, nineteen eighty-seven. 
another an, another film taking in the the stage we're going to go for stage fright mm-hmm. 1987 michael suave is it michael michael uh michael i michael? always say michael for some Mikley? reason suave i uh, directed absolutely nuts from what i recall although and he's also although, in opera. although it's been a while oh he, yeah suave's in oh, opera but he's uncredited is he he is the uh, dead. Oh, I'll not say that. Oh, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Of course he is. He of is. He, he is, is in the film, but um, he's well, uncredited, so I'm not saying anything so, about that. So hold on, man. We're talking. We've got. <laughs> so the links are: he's in the film. Yep. It's the same it's year. Yep. It's Italian. Yep. It's got a stage theme. Yep. And it's got a bird theme. Yes, it does. Holy fucking shit! <laughs> <laughs> Five links. Drink I'm that, sure people. It more. will never happen again. I am sure there are more, but fantastic. <laughs> uh, and I cannot wait to, to watch it again, and I can't wait to talk about it again. Slightly less highbrow than this, I would say. Yes, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty slashery, I guess, but... Yeah, <coughs> so, uh, so great. Uh, so join us for that, and... Uh, Once again, thanks very much for listening and we will see you next time. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.